The relationship between ego and self-esteem is a truly complicated one, as neither is inherently good or evil, and they simply work as fuel for our own confidence and determination. But only one of them truly works in the face of adversity, while the other crumbles away. So, when we oftentimes find ourselves feeling owed recompense from the world due to a perceived slight against us, whether or not this feeling is truly warranted falls on our self-esteem versus ego, and not being able to see and understand the difference is often the first step on the road to becoming a demon. And one great example of this is in the world of Kimitsu no Yaiba and the talented thunder-touting Truant tastelessly trampling over tradition, Kaigaku, the first half of the Thunder Pillar's successors. An empty stomach can be one of the worst feelings as the days grow colder, and a company working to help fill you up with some of the freshest ingredients delivered right to your doorstep is HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that brings to you all the ingredients to make a delicious meal, and getting what you want when you want it is almost effortless with HelloFresh. And the service even allows for flexibility of your own schedule, as you can change or update the delivery date of your order with just a few taps of the finger on the HelloFresh app. Though you don't have to just get dinner options as well with HelloFresh, as they offer many breakfast, snack, and dessert options as well. My favorite meal out of the options that I ordered was the steak with mushroom cream sauce. Not something that I normally go for, but the options that HelloFresh had provided me allowed me to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and enjoy this tasty meal. Now if you're interested in getting started with HelloFresh, you can use my link below or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGMEDINOV70 for 70% off plus free shipping on your first box. Thank you again for HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. This video contains spoilers for Kimitsu no Yaiba right up to the final arc in the manga, so if you want to avoid spoilers, you have been warned. Kaigaku is a rival character turned antagonist that functions as the main foil to one of the four protagonists of Kimitsu no Yaiba, that being Zenitsu Agatsuma, with them both living very similar lives before becoming demon slayers, right up to them both being offered a second chance at said life to make things better by the former thunder pillar Jigoro Kuejima. Though, where Zenitsu reforged himself through his Gramps' training little by little, Kaigaku worked to satiate his unfillable hunger, which eventually led him to sacrificing his humanity to obtain more power. Though before we get too deep into that, let's first understand the meaning behind his name and design. Starting first with Kaigaku's name, with the kanji used to make it up being Kai, which means a sly or tricky person, and Gaku, which translates essentially to mountain or peak, can cause his name to hold a sort of double meaning to it. First, when you read it together, Kaigaku's name speaks of his own ego, as someone who deceives others into believing he's at his peak, or tricks himself into believing that he's bigger than he is. Though, the end of his name, the Gaku portion, is actually more of a standard ending for Japanese names, so the key focus of the name itself is the sly or tricky portion of it, which relates to his willingness to betray not only other people, but his own humanity. And though he doesn't have a stated family name in the main series, in the high school spin-off series, Kimitsu Academy, he is given one, this being Inadama, which is the name of a rice spirit that governs the harvest produced each year of rice, and has some relation to Tanokami, or the God of the Harvest, which is a kami famous for its Inari shrines, or fox shrines, these temples where foxes would act as messengers to Tanokami, and would watch over the shrines that people would give small donations to, in hopes of being blessed with a good yield this year. Now how does this connect back to Kaigaku? Well, both the fact that he was raised in a temple that was very similar to an Inari shrine, and that foxes in Japanese culture are creatures associated directly with being sly or tricky, which which of course connects to his given name, though there's another connection found in the name, but we'll discuss that later in the video. Now, design-wise, Kaigaku is rather interesting. Firstly, based on the style of his hair and the exaggerated sideburns, I believe that Kaigaku's overall design might have been based off of Akira Fudo from Devilman, which would make sense as, like Akira, Kaigaku would go on to become a demon. Though, outside of that, the other major design element of Kaigaku's human appearance is his necklace, which has a magitama attached to it, which is a ceremonial and 
religious ornament for both the Shinto and Buddhist faith, with the mythological origins of it being that they were created as a gift for Amaterasu, who proceeded to bite them, then spit them outwards into the world to become future gods. Due to this, their shape is often tied to birth and creation, and they are seen as something like the original form of the soul. Now, the sacred origins of these jewels have also given them association with good luck and the ability to ward off evil, which likely explains why Kaigaku, a demon slayer who is constantly fighting evil, would wear them. Though, you might notice that his is a different color than the usual Magatama style, as they are most commonly created from jade, which gives them a very eye-catching green color. But his is blue, or gold in the anime, but more official colorings depict them as blue, even in his early life, so we will operate under the idea that they are supposed to always be blue, and not that they change color for no reason. But this change in color isn't entirely uncommon for Magitamas, as they can be made from many different materials, from animal bone to precious stone. But the color specifically selected for Kaigaku's necklace might have more importance to his character than what you might initially assume. Now, why might you ask? Well, that's because Magitamas are greatly associated with another symbol in Japanese mythos, that being the symbol of Tomoe, which is one of the most famous symbols in all of Japanese history and has become globally popular thanks to other series like Naruto and its Sharingan Eye design, as well as Orochimaru's Cursed Mark, which I mention only because Naruto is one of the three series that impacted Demon Slayer's creation the most according to Gotoge sensei but either way, the symbol of Tomoe itself, while having this connection to Magitama, also makes a bridge between Magitamas and the four major Mitamas, or honorable spirits of Kami and humans. These four spirits also have an association with colors, with the blue Mitama being known as the Niji Mitama, and represents a harmonious spirit, often worn by people seeking harmony with others. But to say Kaigaku doesn't match the Magitama or Mitama purpose is quite an understatement, as he is an extremely selfish individual, but was likely given this jewel at a young age in hopes that it would encourage him to become better, as he's worn it since he was a young child, and the idea of harmony or the lack thereof, is actually a key element of his character and his story as well. From being unable to work and share the successor role with someone else, to ultimately destroying the harmonious life that Zenitsu had become accustomed to after becoming a demon. And I feel like this design element is important and plays a key role in the symbolism of the final clash between the two Thunder Pillar successors. Though speaking of Kaigaku's design, he actually has an interesting detail about something that he's not wearing funny enough, this being the Thunder Pillar style horse which is seen worn by both Zenitsu and Kuwajima, which is a detail pointed out by Gotoge specifically in the bonus pages for Volume 17, as even though he was gifted it, Kagaku refuses to wear it after Kuwajima took on Zenitsu as the second half of the successor to the Thunder Breathing style, and gave him a perceived amount of special treatment due to his scaredy cat nature, which Kagaku saw as a spit to his face from someone he had partly respected, as he no longer felt like he was the special talent he was taken in as. This might have inspired him to develop upon the Thunder Breathing style and develop his own unique approach to it, but due to his lack of willingness to compromise, it's likely what also hindered him from becoming a true master of it on his own, as while working as a slayer, Kaigaku did not carry his Nichiran like others would. Instead, the sheath blade rested entirely on his back, which, while being aesthetically cool and helping distribute the weight of the sword to the center of his body, a common criticism of this method is it makes drawing the blade awkward and slower than drawing it from the hip, especially given the curved nature of a katana, which is true throughout most of history and in any place where a sword was the predominant weapon. Oftentimes, only the heaviest or longest of swords would be carried on back like this, and they wouldn't be drawn in a normal way, instead released and then equipped. Though, this doesn't mean that the method is entirely unused throughout the world, as some groups, like the ninja, utilize the back drawing method in order to both stealthily implement the sheath into the attack as well, but also being back drawn helped them be able to carry the sword while climbing up buildings without the risk of the weapon coming loose or impeding their movement. Which also checks out in the world of Demon Slayer, as Tengen Izui, a former shinobi and master of a thunder breathing style offshoot called Sound Breathing Style, carries his Nichirans on his back. Though, it's more than likely that Kaigaku's back drawn style is the reason that he struggled in thunder breathing, and never was able to master the first kata, under clap and flash because that technique required precision quick drawing and his method of carrying a sword made it extra difficult to match that. Though this wasn't the only reason that should be made apparent as we see from Zenitsu's flashback that Kaigaku while training 
did at one point carry his sword normally like other demon slayers, so his inability to use the style likely comes from something about the first style that didn't click with him, and less the way he carried his sword later in life. Though, because of the aforementioned redistribution of weight, his movement improved and likely made mastering the remaining five katas a lot easier for him than it would be for Zenitsu, who has to work with one side being more weighed down than the other. Which, speaking of the forms of the Thunder Breathing style, each has its own unique name and ties in some way to Kaigaku's character or Japanese mythos as a whole. Let's discuss each and dissect their names and meaning. Starting first with the second kata, this being Inodama, or Rice Spirit, which is an uninterrupted series of five strikes on a single target from different angles, just utterly smashing through its defenses with the speed and power of a bolt of lightning. Now this name might sound familiar, as it's the same as his Kimitsu High counterpart's family name, and while it can be related to what I discussed earlier, Inodama is also related to lightning and thunder, with the Ina being used for the old word for lightning, that being Inozuma, with the Zuma portion actually coming from Suma, or wife, as during the harvest season in Japan, due to the heat and rain, lightning was commonplace, as if rice and lightning were husband and wife. And because of that, Inodama can connect Kaigaku back to thunder breathing as well as Zenitsu, as Zenitsu's last name is Agatsu. Suma, which contains the same kanji for wife that we see in lightning, so they both have some sort of connection to lightning and the thunder breathing style, and is likely why Kaigaku was given Inodama as a family name. Then next we have the third kata, Thunder Swarm, or Mosquito Thunder which appears to be a modified second form where the user jumps in the air and swirls around in a wave-like motion to release a series of attacks intended on surrounding the target in a swarm of slashes from all sides. The motion seems to be done to give off the idea that a storm cloud or a swarm of mosquitoes has completely encased them. Now, the name of the attack is actually rather interesting. First, while the kanji of it contains the old character for biting or itching, and Thunder, likely referencing the burning pain that Kaigaku's attack unleash, a simplified reading of the name adds an extra layer of depth to it, this being Shubun Seirei, with Shubun being the Japanese name that originates from an Asian lunar solar calendar that divides the years into 24 solar terms, this one specifically being the 16th solar term from the months of September 23rd to October 8th, and is described often as thunder softening, insects nesting, and the air getting colder, where the other portion of the name, Seirei, can be understood as flash, like to do something quickly, which of course works with the speed of the breathing style and the attack itself. Then we have the fourth kata, Distant Thunder, which Kaigaku seems to use in a quick draw-like fashion, similar in nature to the purpose of the first kata. How it works is the user draws their blade in a vicious swirl of strikes, then dashes forward at a target, with the first part of the attack obviously mimicking the thunder in the clouds, and the dash itself being the lightning that strikes its target, though it is much slower and less precise of an attack than the first kata is, and likely is designed more for protecting the user and allowing them to either create an opening while being surrounded, or move freely between targets. And it is likely this technique that Kaigaku has been using to make up for his failings with the first form, as well as why the attack was considered too slow to hit Zenitsu. The name itself is actually pretty straightforward, as Enrai, the Japanese name of the attack, just directly translates to Distant Thunder, and is a common term used across multiple pieces of media from music albums to movies. Following this, we have the fifth kata, Heat Lightning, in which Kaigaku unleashes a quick but heavy upward slash with the intent of striking those above him. The basis of this attack being aimed upwards likely works off the idea that heat, or warm air, rises. Now, the name Heat Lightning is written in a strange way, and can be understood as more thermal field lightning, often occurring after cold fronts, which ties back to the second and third kata's rice field and autumn connections, as well as playing with another element of Kaigaku's attacks, but we'll discuss that a bit later into the video. And then finally, we reach the final form used by him, the sixth kata, Rumble and Flash, in which Kaigaku combines together the elements of the previous katas to formulate a devastating barrage. We see the long-distance nature of the fifth kata, the multi-striking barrage of the second, the body movement of the third, and of course, the destructive force of the fourth, combining together to make an attack that leaves little room for anyone to survive. But 
I bet if he could use it, this attack would also implement movements of the first form as well, creating a pattern that mimics the savageness of the storm it takes its name from. Speaking of which, the name of this attack is actually in reference to a classic parable, that being Thunder Echoes While Lightning Runs, which I believe to be a clear reference to the two thunder-breathing disciples. Kaigaku is clearly the thunder, someone who pounds their chest and loudly proclaims their talent in order to scare or intimidate, but in the face of unshakable opposition. Position, he is simply noise, where Zenitsu is the lightning, moving at incredible speeds and striking with all his might before a noise can even be made. The sixth kata is a representation of these two elements of the thunder breathing style and the successors chosen for it, as if they were able to settle their differences and become a single unit working in tandem, they would become nearly unstoppable in their attacks, with Zenitsu's razor sharp lightning weaving between the claps of Kaigaku's thunder. Most demons would find themselves with no options but to die. Though this future of harmony is entirely hypothetical, as Kaigaku would go on to abandon his humanity in the pursuit of power and became a demon. And with his talents as a swordsman mixed together with a need to replace their fallen members, Kaigaku quickly rose into the ranks of the Upper Moon Demons, taking the place of the 6th rank demon. His demonic design doesn't change much of his overall look, but it does add a black flame-like pattern to each of his cheeks, as well as the obvious change to his irises reading now Upper Moon and Rank 6. And now the black markings on his face, as well as his demonic appearance, might be in reference to Sasuke's own cursed mark forms that he has throughout the early stages of Naruto. As not only does Kaigaku have an inbuilt reference to the symbol of Tomoe, but in this state, Sasuke's Chidori, or Lightning Blade, tends to take on a black color to it, similar to Kaigaku's own black lightning from his own blood demon art. Though the biggest change of his overall design is how much more casual Kaigaku dresses, as even though he is still wearing his partially undone Slayer uniform, which rests extremely loosely, like a retired samurai's kimono, as well, tied around his waist is a long silk blue-like obi, adding not only to his showy demeanor, but again playing into that retired look. He looks like someone who feels at their peak. And with those design elements in mind, it is very possible that this design of Kaigaku was in reference to Sasuke again from Naruto, but this time specifically his Shippuden design. And like any powerful demon, Kaigaku is in possession of a powerful blood demon art that is only amplified by his own abilities as a demon slayer, which he can mix together with his thunder breathing style to give his attacks a real bolt of black lightning to follow it making the motions of his forms take on a physical shape and resulting in the creation of a pain curse. Which, as he explains, every strike of his attack that successfully lands, the area that the body was hit in continues to burn and crack as if the flesh was continuously struck by electricity. This will slowly wear down his opponent's vitality until they can no longer keep up with his intense speed. And this is likely why the fifth kata was named Heat Lightning, to mirror that burning nature of his flesh Nichiran. Oh, and speaking of his Nichiran, Kaigaku's is actually rather interesting. First, its appearance. It, to me, at least looks like a much longer blade than the standard katana. Maybe an Odachi-like weapon. But it could explain why he carries it on his back instead of at his waist, and why it would be much too slow for the first form. As well, it explains why the blade seems to have an extended reach when fighting Zenitsu. The other interesting detail is the coloring of the Nichiren, as it is the inverse to his shared successor, with Zenitsu's being a black blade with a white pommel and a golden lightning crack. Kaigaku's is a gold blade with a black pommel and a black crack of lightning, the yin to Zenitsu's yang, which is interesting, given that Magitamas are also seen as symbols of yin and yang. Now, it's very obvious that Kaigaku was created to be a foil to Zenitsu, as long before either of them had even trained to become demon slayers, they were both born into similar rough situations, orphaned at a young age, and each seeked community which formed them into the people that they are. Kaigaku searched for people to help him survive and acknowledge his talents, whereas Zenitsu seeked out people who would take care of him as he felt useless. Though, both of these families that they discovered ended up being the people who would shape them into who they were, 
when Kawajima found them. In the case of Zenitsu, his reckless pursuit of love and protection left him vulnerable to a woman who lied in order to pass on her own debt onto him, where Kaigaku joined a temple, the same one that Himajima worked at, and his desperate strive for attention and survival of the fittest mindset led to him being ostracized by the group and ultimately caused a demon attack that killed so many, as well as leading directly to the imprisonment of the blind monk. Though, seeing a future in both of them, Kawajima adopted both of them, not only pardoning their past sins, but giving the two everything he could, including teaching them the thunder-breathing style. And though the two of them struggled, they did so for different reasons. For Zenitsu, he was able to master the first form, but nothing else. As while he was focused, soft-hearted, and full of the energy needed to become lightning, he lacked the sheer strength and veracity required to also be thunder. Where for Kaigaku, the opposite was true, as due to his unwillingness to compromise on his ideals, and his lack of concentration and understanding to perform the first form, instead he focused his attention on the remaining five forms that came to him with much ease. But like the orphanage, he quickly became ostracized here as well, with other students of the thunder-breathing style wanting to knock him down for his ego by starting rumors that the forms that Kaigaku had mastered must have been easy since he learned them without being able to do the first form. It must not have helped that even the meekest of the students was able to do the things that he couldn't. Though both of these difficulties perfectly match the mindset and plays very well into the sixth form's name, as due to Zenitsu fighting to become stronger so that one day he can truly earn love, it let him refine himself to become the lightning within the storm, where Kaigaku's hunger for acknowledgement and loud proclamations of his skills and worthiness is what helped him become thunder that followed the lightning, who should have become future thunder pillars. But Kaigaku's hypocritical ego, forged through years of running away and blaming others for his hardship, caused everything around him to crumble, with the most significant moment of his damaging mindset coming to fruition when he became a demon and gave Muzin the power of one of the rare five elemental breathing styles, leading the kind old man who gave Kaigaku a new home, friends, and talents to commit rituals out of shame. He even performed this action without a Kai Shakunin or secondary swordsman, meaning that Kuwajima desired to suffer in pain and agony, bleeding out with a slit belly as a reflection over his failures to save Kaigaku from his own darkness. And what does this man do in reaction of the news that his own selfishness led to the death of the person who offered him a second chance at life and treated him like his own son? He mocked him for being useless and playing favorites, while going on to explain that he only sides with those who treats him as correct, and owes nothing to those who treat him well. From his point of view, Kaigaku is owed the world, and will take it by force if it doesn't give itself to him. And if the opposition he is facing is too strong or scary in the moment, he can always tuck his tail between his legs and beg for forgiveness, so that he can live on to see another day to stab that generosity in the back when he sees an opportunity to do so. And this revelation into his mindset isn't even something that came on from a twistic demonic desire. Kaigaku has always felt this way. He has believed that he can win at the end of the day, no matter what he did, and how many bridges he burned. As if we rewind time to see the reason why he went on to be ostracized by the other orphans at the temple, it wasn't because they hated him for any undisclosed reason. It was because he was caught stealing from a donation box that belonged to the blind monk Himejima, believing that he wouldn't be able to notice otherwise. Then, when he ran away from the temple so they wouldn't tell on him, he was attacked by a demon, and instead of lying down and dying, he begged for the demon to spare his life. And in exchange, he would bring it to the temple, where all the other children slept, ultimately choosing to selfishly sacrifice sleeping children for his own life. Then, while training as a thunder-breathing disciple, Kaigaku had a hugely inflated ego, and was mocked by others for it. This would cause him to become overly aggressive with anyone who displeased him, and took the position that he was in extremely seriously. Refusing to acknowledge that he may be receiving special treatment in a similar way to Zenitsu. Though, it was never enough. Kaigaku always hungered for more power, and his converting into a demon came both out of fear, as he had stumbled across the first rank upper moon demon Kokushibo, and instantly felt an overwhelming desire to surrender to him, but also because Kokushibo offered him power. 
with a demon clearly seizing an opportunity to convert him, as any demon with breathing style capabilities would be a powerful asset no matter how cowardly, Kagaku accepted it, not just to save himself, but to fully embrace the power of becoming a demon, as he then went on to slaughter and devour humans on his own, even likely killing his other Slayer brethren. His outer body now matched his inner heart, a living example of survival and strength being paramount to everything else. He was at his peak, yet, in a final clash with Zenitsu, Kaigaku became subject to something he could never imagine. Zenitsu, the crybaby boy who represented everything that Kaigaku hated, took on inspiration from his cramps, his friends, and even Kaigaku himself to create a new form of thunder breathing, the seventh kata, the flaming thunder god, a form that not only matched Kaigaku's newfound strength, but overpowered it, severing not only his head from his body, but destroying the necklace that contained his Magitama. Symbolically denying Kaigaku rebirth, as well allowing Zenetsu and his friends to reclaim the Niji Mitama's harmonious spirit, with a final slang style that represented the power of harmony, and showing just how unworthy of the symbol Kaigaku had become. Kaigaku is a perfectly executed foil character, and a great example of how demons of Kimetsu no Yaiba work. As, even throughout his brief appearances in the series, the narrative elements of his character fit as a perfect ending to Zenitsu's own personal story. And he works as a great example that any time period can create someone of either great evil or great kindness, and it is all about your mindset about hardships, your ego versus self-esteem that matters most in the end. Because those who do not give to others can never expect to receive anything in return, and only wanting in the end is the same as having nothing, because you'll never be able to possess the ability to create something. And no matter how long you live, how strong you get, Dying powerful, but alone. There's no more pathetic way to go. And if you enjoyed this video, and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. Every little bit helps keep this channel flowing as smoothly as possible. And if you want to avoid falling to your demons, well you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at, by Shimonetta.com.